Touch the number one. Okay. Oh my God, shut the f up. Touch the number one, okay? Oh Hands down. Oh Hands down. Can you touch the number one? Just one. Following an injury, it used to be thought that the brain couldn't learn. All right. The brain nice is right absolutely side. programmable, and the environment is what does the programming. Well, Who's your doctor? Who's your doctor? Who's your doctor? You know. Brain injury is a silent epidemic. A lot of people know about it, but not a lot of people talk about it. And even less people know how to address it. We tend to avoid things that make us feel uncomfortable. All of a sudden, this person who has been injured is more isolated. You really have to show a lot of respect for that person. They're not often treated as people, but they are. Behavior and brain injury is a special thing. A lot of people are afraid of it, but it comes with having a brain injury. The brain is just trying to wake up and react and relearn. Get off of me! Damn it! We say that the behavioral consequences of an injury are probably more significant than the physical or cognitive limitations. Hey, knock it off. Many acute rehabilitation facilities can't handle that. They sedate them, they tie them up. Those are the patients that really, if we can get them improved the most. Have a good day, Ms. Robin. As a behavior analyst, what I do is I go around the clinic here at CNS and I observe the appropriate interactions and kind of the inappropriate interactions between patients and staff. And I note the things that work well and the things that don't work so well, and I create programming to increase the good things. Good, put the peg in the board. Put it in the board, like this. We need to help and protect the most vulnerable people in our society. And I can't think of anyone who's more vulnerable than a person with a brain injury, who is confused, who is agitated, who's disoriented and sometimes being able to guide that patient through an activity is absolutely an essential step to get them to become more independent. I like it. All you need is a little stimulation, right? Okay. Uh, 12, 6, 7, 8. 6, 7, 8, push. Stay. I think seven, in other settings, seven, if you scream and yell at somebody, they're going to leave you alone. <laughs> they're going to go away. And that's, that's not what we do. If someone screams and yells at you, you're like, okay, well, how can we shape that behavior to be something positive? The thing with behavior is it takes a lot of time. You could be doing the same activity for days and days and days, and then it clicks, that new connection happens. Working with someone who doesn't want to be worked with is really challenging. But when you do uh, it every day and you help people every day, something is going to work. It's just a matter of time. Hey, what country are we in? We are lucky because we have behavior analysts who can come in and give us a good structure for addressing certain behaviors. And then it's consistent throughout the clinic, back at the apartments, through every single moment of these patients' lives. You did that pretty good, huh? We here at CNS have a treasure trove of data. Our staff are collecting data for us behavior analysts every 15 minutes. That information is then rolled back into a staffing. Can you pass me those? The behavior analysts, the case managers, the clinical and residential staff get together to discuss the patient's behavior. Get more information Three days out of the week, we have interdepartmental staffing, so members of every department from education, OT, PT, cognitive rehab, case management, nursing. And we discuss what our goals for this patient, barriers in getting to that goals, and that's where we can see the breakdowns. It's not just one person's perspective, it's 40 or 45 you know, folks that are involved uh, with that patient. We develop behavior programs, and then we all 
do the behavior program, even the receptionist. I really appreciate trying to help me, so thank you very much to improve. It's not just training staff on behavior tools or a crisis intervention. It is ingrained in our infrastructure. It's in everything that we do. One of our neuropsychologists years ago said the number one thing about CNS is persistence. That we don't give up, we stick to our plan, and no matter what we're faced with, and sometimes that can be very challenging, you can't stop because that's not the end point, that's not the goal. The goal is to get that person better. Row, 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 you gently down. This is a very hard job, it's true. But at the same time, it's incredibly rewarding. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. I like that feeling of getting to see people progress. I like being inspired every day by seeing people work through huge changes in their lives. It's kind of incredible seeing how people can fight through and make progress. Mm -hmm. Can fruit be eaten as a snack? Why not? Why not? All right. So that's a yes, right? Yeah. Good job. Awesome. Yeah. Good job, Rick. I always say I would do my job for free, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> like, don't tell anybody. Like, just because that it, that part is so rewarding as a person that you get to um, you get to help someone regain their life. Hold here and here. You know, being able to be with the patient the first time they were able to call their parents by name again. Um, it's pretty rewarding. Um, it's pretty emotional. I'm so proud to be part of an organization who can offer hope. <laughs> who has made changes in people's lives that have sustained the remainder of those patients' lives. That we've truly made an impact on families. Your loved one has these challenges. It, it doesn't frighten us. We're not gonna shy away from it. We're here to help, and we can help. And we've seen it happen many times. While we can't guarantee anything, I can guarantee you that we'll try, and I can guarantee you that we'll do the best we can. When I had a patient tell me he'd been discharged about a year, and we keep in contact with our patients after they're discharged. And he said, Kathy, I'm happy. And it was like, I'm gonna get choked up about it. Um, that's, that's what it's about.